the aggregate demand and aggregate supply uh, is determining the out total equilibrium level of output right y shows the output level right so this knows the uh, this mean, uh, this is known as the equilibrium level of national where aggregate demand and aggregate supply are equivalent for example the total demand of the chicken in the country is 100 million tons of chicken per year right and the economy is also producing 100 million tons of chicken at the rate of uh, let's suppose two pound per kg right whatever right so this is how we can say that uh, the equilibrium is determined but we know that since economy is not producing one good but they are producing uh, hundreds and hundreds of goods so all the goods are taken uh, their aggregate demand and their aggregate su supply is uh, taken into consideration and then we see how it is at equilibrium at what level of price now this equilibrium does not last for a long period of time uh, why because there may be an inflationary gap or deflationary gap now what is inflationary gap inflation is the rise in the price so inflationary gap is what it's a situation where resources are already fully employed and there may be an inflationary gap why because there is an increase in the demand that will cause the changes in the price but no variation in the real output now what happens if the economy is operating at full capacity level I mean at full employment and they are producing whatever they can produce so it means here they, they are meeting at equilibrium level but what happens due to any reason if the demand increases by 10 percent while the production cannot increase because they are already operating at full level so what will happen there will be a rise in the price by 10 percent as well right so this gap between the uh, total supply and total uh, demand you see it will be like this aggregate supply will be less than aggregate demand right or aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply so in this case there is a gap now this gap cannot be filled because why because the reason is that we are already operating at a what at a full capacity level and since there is no external trade so we are talking about the two sector economy so in this case the prices will rise and any shift in the demand or supply will not only change the national income but also change the price level so here is the example uh, in detail it's given you can read it uh, yourself it simply mentioned that if we are country is producing 1000 unit of output and the price of each unit is hundred dollars so this means they are getting one hundred thousand dollars right this is the total the country does not have any external trade now what is happening let's assume the pay rises people may get more monies or the easy credit terms are available or any reason so their expenditure is increased by 20 percent that is 120 dollars right now what happens the economy aggregate demand has risen by 20 percent now since the economy is fully employed and cannot produce more than thousand units, this is a full capacity so what will happen if the expenditure rises by 20 percent the price also have to rise by 20 percent this is called as inflationary gap now this is a gap between the aggregate demand and aggregate supply which will ultimately rise ultimately cause a rise in the price so in other words when economy is at full employment any increase in aggregate will result aggregate demand will result in inflation right similarly exactly opposite of this situation will be known as deflationary gap now what is deflationary gap in a situation where there is unemployment of resources unemployment of resources means there are some resources but which are not being utilized so far so that will lead to a deflationary gap you see prices are fairly constant and real output changes as the aggregate demand varies what happens similarly here aggregate demand here aggregate demand will be less than aggregate supply right 
so what our deflation can be described as the extent to which aggregate demand function will have to shape upward you see it has to shape upwards to produce the full employment it means you have to if there's no demand so why will be the companies will be producing since the company have already produced more and there is less demand so what will happen means the demand is let's suppose 100 unit and the, the country has produced 110 units so in that case the 10 is the extra it's surplus so ultimately to sell these surplus unit the companies the organization will uh, have to decrease the price so the price level will come down so what will happen so when they they so to avoid this situation the companies will produce less they will not produce 110 units they will produce 100 units so means they are now uh, keeping some resources idle or we can say unemployed so in this case it's a situation when the country is not operating at their full capacity they are not fully utilizing all the resources to produce all those goods since there is less demand in the economy so when there is less demand so the prices will rise so what to do in that case in that case the demand curve will have to shift upward how it will shift upward the government may push this uh, this spending um, uh, government may increase this uh, demand by uh, you can say spending more money so by providing more job opportunities or something like that when people will have more money so they will demand more goods and services so hence the overall aggregate demand might rises so in this case what we say that uh, that this is a deflationary gap if it does not happen so uh, when there is a less demand in the economy right so what will happen the there will be an excess production and due to this excess production prices will come down and we have studied that the supply is positively related to the price when prices come down this the supplier will reduce the production to avoid the losses so what will happen when they will reduce the production so you mean overall economy is not producing at the optimum level there are some resources which are unemployed right so in this case what will happen so now to meet the aggregate demand the production will reduce so this gap be of 10 percent or 20 percent is known as deflationary gap and in deflationary gap uh, when there is deflationary gap so the prices comes down now the next variable is the business cycle now what is business cycle you see as the name clarifies cycle it means there are certain positions in it business cycle sometimes also known as trade cycle uh, are the continual sequence of the rapid growth in national income right followed by the slowdown in growth and then for a fall in the national income which is called as a recession after the recession comes growth again and then it this has reached a peak a cycle turns into recession once more you see so means the, it, this definition tells us that there are various phases there are various phases um, in the business cycle and sometimes it is at recession sometimes it's at recovery sometimes it's at repression and boom so let's see all these one by one that what is it and how it happens look at this diagram as you can see see this is the business cycle it goes up 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 reaches to the top then comes down 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 then reaches to the bottom bottom level and then slowly and gradually again goes up so these are the four uh, points you can see a b and c d right now this is at uh, y axis uh, x axis we are measuring the time and the y axis we are measuring the output so you see as the time proceeds the output sometime increase sometime decrease you see sometimes it goes up and sometimes it goes down at a point A, you see the economy is entering into recession. Why? We see slowly and gradually the things are coming down. You see, this is a downward movement. Now, in the recession phase, the consumer, what happens in recession? The demands fall. Demand falls. When demand falls, what happens? The orders will be cut. The inventory level will be reduced. And the business failures will occur as the firm find themselves unable to sell their goods because there is less demand so they will cut down the inventory they will further reduce the production 
when they reduce the production what happens they will lay off some employees when they lay off some employees overall aggregate demand will reduce now people have less money or you can say less number of people have money so the less there will be less demand further the demand will cut down so what happened the production and employment will fall I mean there will be unemployment the employment will fall the general price level will begin to fall because there is people don't have money to buy the goods so ultimately the price level will come down and eventually when this happens this will continue to happen this will make you to reach to the point B and this is called as depression phase you see this is depression this is a total downward movement this will continue 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 if if uh, any if if there is no concrete measure taken by the government so this situation will continue to happen and it will make the things worse and ultimately lead it to uh, the point b which is depression so what will happen after depression then the government is taking some measures so what will happen the point c the economy has reached the recovery phase you know when there is worse of something then good things starts happening after that so see the economy